Welcome. If you know Sonny, the song father Grasso, well then you know that over the years he's been in a company of some very, very famous people. And you also know that more often than not, he's either said or done something that made him say, Oops, I did it again. So sit back each week and enjoy yourself as Sonny recants many of his social blunders. Wow. Another rousing round of applause. Hello, everybody. Yes, this is Sonny Grasso, the song father, for my second podcast on the new format of Oops, I Did It Again, where I tell embarrassing stories because I'm kind of proud of them. (laughs) You could do a million good things in life, but do a couple of screwed up things, and that's what people remember. It's my new philosophy. Anyway, so it's Wednesday here in beautiful downtown North Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, It is in the condo. I just had to turn the heat on. It is 59 degrees inside. So I can only imagine what it is outside with a little cold front coming through along with the rain and dark skies. And wow, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Everything is happening weather-wise. It was like the hottest summer uh, I think they said in the last 10 to 12 years, and we endured through that. I just only, only, I only got down here in March, and uh, so far it's the wettest uh, winter uh, and the coldest winter in the last, like, 15 years, whatever. So, yeah, here they come. They're coming to get me with the white coats. See them? I don't wait till they start knocking on the door. So, anyway, uh, last week's uh, podcast... De Niro versus Grasso uh, got a lot of beautiful, nice things. People sent me messages and, uh, you know, either called me or uh, sent me, uh, what do they call those things, uh, inboxes, uh, saying how they how much they enjoyed it and they liked, uh, they liked the stories. And um, But, you know, one thing that, that, that most of them said to me that I didn't get because I guess I was taking it from just my point of view and what I did and blah, blah, blah. But most of them said, how great is that, that you got to spend time and be in the company of a Robert De Niro and an Al Pacino? And I said, wow, I, ne- I never actually thought of it that way. But yeah, I, I would bet it's, it's in, the, in the mid 90, 90% of people in the world never got to spend that kind of time uh, with an Al Pacino or, or a Robert De Niro. So uh, I, I am more than just lucky. I am blessed that I have these stories to tell. Um, you know, all started, of course, with Daddio uh, getting me involved in the, in the movies and, and running security for them. You know, I made a joke before, like seconds ago, that uh, the ambulance was coming for me or the sirens were coming for me with the, with the white coats, and they just pulled into the lot. <laughs> but I don't think it's for me, so, you know. One thing I'm going to say, and this is not a dig against Florida at all, is that when you do move down here, the joke about moving to Florida has been going on since I can remember, uh, to going back to at least the 1950s, that Florida is where people come to die. And uh, since I've been here, two, three, four, somewhere... In the vicinity, almost a year now, I'm going to be here. Um, I think eight people have, in this community uh, have passed away. Like, wow. And it's a scary thing. Uh, right now, the uh, real estate down here is out of control. I mean out of control. Uh, what I paid for my condo, I could easily double it right now. So, you know, of course, then people will say, well, do it. Go ahead, jump on it. Put that money in your pocket. Well, if I do that, I still have to go somewhere else. And those somewhere else's, their prices are both will double. So, you know, I like where I am and it's, and it's fine. But uh, looking down the road, I'm like, you get a little nervous now. If, God forbid, uh, you know, any more people are, are passing away uh, and the prices are too high and this administration is doing what they're doing, uh, you know, just 
keep on printing up Monopoly money, and, uh, you know, it's got to be paid back sooner or later. And guess who pays it back? Yeah. Don't worry, this isn't a political rant. But how do these places get filled up again? You know, if, if people are on, are on very hard times like they are and they don't have the money and that, how does it get filled up? You know, when you're part of an association and everything else and you pay your fees every month and that's supposed to go for this and that and that. And, but if you got six, six or seven units, if not more, uh, that are empty and you know what I'm saying? It's, uh, it's kind of scary. So now when I see an ambulance pull up like that, you get nervous. Like, okay, oh God, who is it now? But anyway, so getting back to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just made the sign of the cross. If you want to join me and just say a little prayer for whoever they're here for, uh, that everything's okay. So, um, so yeah, so a lot of, uh, a lot of nice compliments about that. And then, you know, and uh, this was my second go around with uh, uh, Mr. Al Pacino. My whole family was in uh, The Godfather, m number one. Most of which were in the uh, the uh, the wedding celebration scene that was filmed in Staten Island. Um, cousins and my sisters and uh, 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 grandmother and aunts and I mean it was just it was like it was just a great experience. Plus we got to get out of school, which was even better. And when it was all done. I was like a hero, a superstar. Here comes a. He, he, he was just in Staten Island filming a movie. Um, I was in the uh, christening scene at the end where everybody's getting killed. Uh, I was an altar boy with my cousin Robert, and um, that's about all I'm going to say on this subject because that is one of the uh, one of the podcasts coming up in the future. And um, those of you that know me closely, uh, you know, and I, I don't mean just through social media. I mean through growing up with me and everything else. Uh, will know that what I'm about to say is the truth. You will not believe some of the stupid things that I did while we were filming The Godfather. That uh, <laughs> it makes me it makes me laugh just thinking about it. And uh, you know, hopefully you get a chuckle out of them too, uh, because um, there were there were quite a few uh, scenes. And uh, so anyway, so uh, this this week's podcast is called. Oh, I'm sure you know by now because you saw it when you clicked on it, but My Threesome with Diana Ross and Michael Jackson. So I'm sure a lot of people clicked on that right away, so well, I got to hear this, and, uh, you know, thinking it's going to be something, uh, you know, perverted or something. It's not perverted. You know, it's, uh, it's advertising. Uh, but in a way, it was a threesome. And uh, so uh, let's get to it. The, uh, what was that show? Well, uh, Sherman and Mr. Peabody. Let's go, Sherman. Let's get into the Wayback Machine. And we're going back to 1978, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, Records and albums and and C and not even CDs yet, you know, record players. It was about, and this is the way it was tagged. So you know, I don't don't. What do they say? Kill the messenger. Uh, but it was it was tagged as the black version of the Wizard of Oz. All right, I, I personally don't didn't think then. I still don't think now. You needed to say that. Uh, you, know, you just call it, it's a remake of the Wizard of Oz, and these are who, these are the people that are in it. But um, it was, uh, uh, Diana Ross was Dorothy. Michael Jackson was the Scarecrow. Nipsey Russell was the Tin Man. And I cannot remember the guy's name that was the Lion. I should have wrote it all down so I could sound like I'm smart. <laughs> but I guess not. Uh, I just can picture his face. He had a chubby face. He was a big man. Um, big mustache. Cannot remember his name. And... Um, the the song from uh, the like the hit main theme song from the whole movie was all over the radio when it came out. Come on, at, there we go. That clock probably doesn't go off if, for two days until I sit down here and start to do this. But every, well, I guess it was a false alarm because they oh, unless they took the person out. But there goes the ambulance. So. Say a prayer. 
Uh, anyway, the clock is coming down. A lot of people said, oh, Sonny, please leave it up. We love it when we're here. Leave it up. Leave it. No, I can't. I can't take it anymore. But anyway, so uh, the, the song theme from The Wiz was called Ease On Down the Road. And I don't you know, maybe by hearing the title, you remember it now, but... I just remember that. Come on and ease on down, ease on down the road. Come on and ease on down, ease on down the road. And that's all I can remember. But uh, so, uh, yeah, so we're filming. And it was done, most of the filming was done in, inside the studio. And then most of the other uh, 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 locations really were just in one spot. And it was at the World Trade Center. Uh, and the World Trade Center wasn't open yet. It was almost almost ready to open. You know, it was constructed and all the windows were in, which made the mafia happy. Well, now they're backing up. I guess they had their own building. Maybe they are coming for me. 308. Let me know. I got to put clothes on. I'm doing a naked podcast. And, uh, <laughs> and um, what was I saying now again? Oh, so down at the World Trade Center. And, uh, although, you know, all the windows were in and an electrician was, I mean, everything was hooked up. There were no tenants in yet. And, uh, and of course, not open to the public. Uh, but the uh, plaza in between the two buildings, one and two, you know, the ones that came down for, for the world to see on television terribly, um, that whole plaza that was in there, if you've ever been down to that area, that was Emerald City. That's where the wizard was, and that's where the Yellow Brick Road took them to. Um, so they had uh, the Yellow Brick Road coming, you know, maybe from Building One, then going in circles around the plaza to this big, beautiful. It was, it was uh, wood or plastic, but it was painted like it was twenty-four karat gold. Beautiful version of the of the world, uh, and that was. You know where the, the yellow brick road ended right there in a twisting circle, like a like a Carvel ice cream, right there. And uh, so <clears throat> I remember getting down there and looking at it and saying, "Wow, you know this is beautiful, this place. You know, but what are we doing?" And, you know, and then so they it was explained to me that this is the Emerald City and this is where uh, uh, Dorothy and this, the Tin Man and the Scarecrow and the Lion all end up in Toto. And oh, okay. Um, so the first, uh, I was there again with Uncle Bobby and uh, Uncle Mike, and I even brought a couple of friends down uh, to come on the set because we weren't hired for the actual shooting because I guess most of it was inside. But we were hired to work overnight to make sure nobody, you know, once everything was set up, there was a lot of equipment there and a lot of money, and and the, the set was already set up and painted and designed. So we were there to make sure, uh, you know, as they said in... Uh, in the Godfather, make sure there's no innocent bystanders hanging around causing trouble or whatever. <laughs> and uh, uh, so the first couple of nights, they were, uh, I'm actually probably the first week to week and a half, they were testing the whole sound system. Um, and that was a pain in the ass, you know, because you would hear like maybe 35 seconds of a song and then boom, then it would turn off. Then they'd go and work on this and work on that and move speakers. Some of these speakers were, were like 15 feet high. It was unbelievable. And uh, all right, sorry, all right, there we go. All right, so I can't play it again and blast. I mean, yeah, I'm surprised it didn't blast the windows out uh, of the two towers there because that's how loud it was. You could feel the vibration from hundreds of feet away. And I, I was always amazed that how we were allowed to do that at night. I, you know, I always thought there was some kind of a noise restriction in, in uh, Manhattan, but uh, anyway, uh, so, you know, that was the first for me that uh, went down to the, the World Trade Center um, with, with movies that we were down there. We were there with the contract on Cherry Street with, with Sinatra. Uh, he had a scene where he pulled down there and was investigating a dead body. We had a scene with... Uh, uh, three Days of the Condor with Robert Redford and Faye Dunaway when they were following uh, Cliff Robinson around. Uh, that was filmed down there. We were there for a few days. Uh, there's another one. I'll, it'll come to me. Um, but uh, then when I was with, uh, you know, 27, 28 years with A&P slash all bombs, whatever, we were there for the 200th anniversary of uh, the Statue of Liberty at the Windows of the World. 
a uh, great, unbelievable, you know, celebration of free booze and shrimp and food and, and then go watch the president's helicopter land and, you know, right there. Uh, just It was unbelievable. A whole, a whole day on the, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say circle line, but it might be. But we had this whole ship to ourselves for the whole day, up and down the Hudson River, all the way up to Bear Mountain and back, and then, you know, uh, drifting and docked right outside the Statue of Liberty. And I had a ton of pictures. I have no idea where they are. You know, probably some of the angles and the pictures, uh, you know, people have gotten by now. But, but you know, so I have a lot of, lot of fond memories for, uh, with, the, with the Twin Towers. And this is where uh, where it first started is, was with them. I remember that other movie, uh, as I'm talking. Uh, I can do that. I can actually remember and talk at the same time. Uh, you know, Daddy O, even up in heaven, still can't believe it. But uh, no, he loved these podcasts. He was just say, "You're a natural. You you got the gift of gab, boy." <laughs> so anyway, so we're down there. Every night, a week and a half, the music blasting. But you know, I'm, I'm like, you know, when I when I'm gonna see something of substance, you know? And uh, yeah, okay, now here, I don't know if you can hear that this friggin' microphone here, but it's raining out. Understand what I'm telling you? It's raining out. But to show you what people, you know, have to do for them for money, the maintenance guy is now walking by the front door. You'll hear it get louder. With the air blower to use, that he uses to blow like the leaves and the dirt off the walkway. Okay? He's doing this in the rain. It's still not, man. Anyway, so by the second week, we, we were asked to stay later. We used to be out of there by six. And then we were asked to stay later. So we were staying there till eight o'clock because the uh, talent as they call it in the business. The talent uh, would be coming in early now to uh, get their makeup because a lot of makeup had to be done. And rather than do it somewhere else and then get them back into a car, so they decided to do it down here at the, at the towers. Okay, good. And uh, so first day, I think it was about six o'clock in the morning. It might even been before that uh, because uh, a lot of makeup needed to be, to be applied. And uh, the order in which they showed up was based on uh, how much uh, time they were going to spend in front of the camera. But Diana Ross was always first. So, you know, her limo would pull up. And I remember the first day when she did, it was a beautiful, uh, not even a town car. It was a, it was a limo. And the um, guy got out, you know, with his bow tie and his hat on his head. And, and he would open the door. I'd go greet her and introduce myself. And uh, then I'd walk her, uh, you know, over to the set and then into the trailer where they do her makeup. Uh, so it just became a routine. Every day, every day, this is what the routine was. We got to the point where the driver, uh, and, and I'll remember his name too. Maybe he was in the movie, but he, uh, uh, he got used to seeing me, so he didn't go open the door. I would go open the door. Uh, you know, how you doing? How are you? Good morning, this and that, da, 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 da. You know, do you have any idea what time I should come back for? And I said, you know what? Uh, uh, I'll find out if you want, but I would rather not take a guess because things change here. And yeah, okay, all right, whatever. And then he'd walk off and go find one of the the uh, PAs, you know, production assistants, and just ask them what time should he come back for the job. Okay. So I got into the habit of she would the door. I would open the door, and she would stick her hand out for me to hold so I could help her get out of the car. And I got into the routine of taking her hand, and giving her a little kiss on the hand. You know, good morning, Miss Ross. How are you? Oh, please, please call me Diana. I'm like, wow, okay. Uh, so I got to be, as I usually do, a little too comfortable uh, with these stars because, uh, you know, I don't believe in, in gawking in the oar. Like, oh, my God, oh, look who it is, you know. You're a, you're a person doing a job just like I am. And, uh, you know, there's, a, there's that, that stardom that's a, that, and this label that, that's a you know, apply to all these these movie stars and and uh, and move, uh, what do you call it, uh, sports guys? And oh my God, look who it is! It's Michael Jordan. Holy shit! It's just a guy, you know. I mean, yeah, he's he's a guy that's uh, maybe at you know at the, at the top of his game in his genre of life. 
uh, and just like Diana Ross was, you know, with that switch over from from the Supremes and her singing voice, which is so beautiful, and you know, then into movies like this one and Mahogany and all that stuff. So I so I kind of get it, but I'm not one of those guys that jump and go crazy. Uh, so uh, I go and I do the, my routine. I grab her by the hand, I kiss her, I know, good morning, how are you? And I, for some reason, I, as we're walking. I just started singing that song, Diana, by Paul Anka. Oh, please stay with me, Diana. And, you know, she smiled, a very polite smile, but she gave me a look like, maybe you better go back to calling me <laughs> Miss Ross, you know. But she never said anything. But one of the uh, uh, assistant directors heard that, and he goes, did I just hear that right? I go, what? Were you just singing Diana to Diana Ross? I go, Yeah. He goes, you know, you, you, there's something wrong with you, pal. And he walked away laughing. But anyway, so that's not, that's not the, uh, oops, I did it again, because it is a threesome with me, Diana Ross, and Michael Jackson. Don't forget that. So, like I said, so that was the routine every day. Okay. Now, we went by for a while. We started to go, uh, we were told to start coming in uh, uh, earlier uh, to watch the set. And that would, that would mean we would leave earlier because they weren't they were doing all interior shots or whatever the hell the story was. Um, so while they were inside filming, they wanted us outside uh, to make sure nobody's going into the building and causing any problems or whatever. All right, so I get it. And I guess it was about for two weeks, a little over two weeks. So we weren't there. I wasn't there to, to greet Diana Ross in the morning because I had already left for the, you know, this and that. Boom, 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 boom. And so when we do, we return back to the set. Now, for normal, for our normal routine, um, the first day goes by, second day goes by, third day, four, almost a whole week. It was on. A, uh, we started on a Monday. By that, by Friday morning, uh, I hadn't been able to do my routine with Diana Ross because she wasn't there. So I even asked one of the production assistants, like, what's going on? They go, oh, she's not in any of these scenes we're doing here. We're doing a lot of interaction between Michael uh, Jackson and... Uh, um, uh, Nipsey Russell and and uh, whoever was playing the uh, the the lion and the close-ups of Michael and Michael Jackson and Toto and oh, okay all right okay you know but she'll be back you know she might even be back today if not uh, next week oh, all right great so uh, you know I'm just walking around doing my thing trying to find a spot to go sneak a cigarette uh, even back then believe it or not um, of course they didn't want you smoking on the set and everything you know and. And I look, and at the corner of my eye, I see um, Diana Ross's limo pulling up. I was like, oh, oh, so she is coming today. Oh, great. So I had my, like, my whole speech all planned, what I was going to say. Where have you been? My goodness, I, I almost quit. I missed you, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I go up, and the limo pulls up. Yep, it was the same driver gets out. And I say, oh, hello. How are you? Where you been? He goes, well, you know, Miss Ross, is, uh, they didn't want her for a while here. But uh, I said, oh, okay, well. Well, I missed you guys. And uh, I said, I got it. He goes, yeah, but wait. And I said, no, no, I got it. And I opened the door, and uh, the hand comes out as normal, and I grab it, and mm, ah, I kiss the hand. And the rest of the body gets out of the limousine, and it's Michael Jackson. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, my God. I said, I, I, I'm, I said I'm so sorry. He goes, oh, thank you. That's a, that's a hell of a, uh, no, not hell of a, um, what the heck. I forget, something like Hecuba or Wonderful Welcome. Um, nobody did that before. And uh, so, like, oh, I said, I said, I'm sorry. I thought you were Diana Ross. I said, no. I, I, I always, this is a routine that we have, that we do every morning. I always kiss her hand like, the, you know, the princess that she is. And, oh, she's not the princess. She's the queen. I'm like, okay, yeah, okay. So I walk him over and bring him inside to where he's going to get his makeup done and and uh, my Uncle Bob was there, and he was just kind of shaking his head, and he's like, what's the matter? I said, uh, he goes, what's the matter with you? You're acting weird. So I told him the story, so he was hysterical laughing. So I snuck off to have another cigarette, and, and like, I right, let it go. So uh, now it's time for him to go. Driver comes up. Could you uh, let Mr. Jackson know that I'm here? Yeah, sure. And uh, so I go, and I knock on the, on the door, uh, and he's getting all his makeup taken off. When he comes out, and I said, your, your uh, car is here. And, oh, okay, thank you, thank you very much. And, uh, are you going to walk me back to uh, 
like, you know, never had to do that with Diana Ross. But yeah, oh, okay. That's what I said to myself. So I said, yeah, sure, no problem. And so I come out, you know, bullshitting with somebody we're talking, and I see him in the doorway of the trailer, and he's like waving. So I go and get him and walk him back to the limo, and he gets in, and he sticks his head out, and he says, no kiss. And I got to be honest with you, I shit my pants. <laughs> what do you, boy, wait a minute, what do you mean kiss? What do you want to do here? And uh, he then he smiled this big, beautiful, flashing, brilliant smile and pulled the door and as they drove away, he just gave a little wave and the thing. So, okay. All right. So I'm thinking to myself, that's not too bad uh, when this happened. You know, I, my Uncle Bob busted my chops for a long time after that. And then when Uncle Mike heard about it, the same thing. And then, uh, you did what? You know? and, uh, and then when Daddy heard about it, he was like, uh, that kid, that kid, uh, Jackson, that's what my father called him. That's what my father called Michael Jackson. Okay. That kid Jackson, was he, uh, was he upset? No. Oh, you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. All right. Uh, okay. Then he goes and asks Uncle Bob, anything happened? Was that kid Jackson? Was he mad? No, everything was fine. So, okay. So, now it's the weekend. Thank God that happened on a Friday, because I don't know how I would have felt seeing Michael Jackson every day uh, after, you know, grabbing uh, grabbing his hand and kissing it. So, the weekend goes by, and uh, we're back in there Monday. And the limo pulls up, same thing, 5.45, 6 o'clock, whatever time it was. And <laughs> the driver, how you doing? Good morning. Good morning, sir. I said, oh, my God, I keep telling you, stop calling me, sir. But uh, that's just the way he was. You know, he was a nice, uh, from Jamaica. See, it's coming. The memory's coming. And now I remember he was from Jamaica. Uh, so I go and I open the door, and a hand sticks out. And I go to grab it, and... You know, like when you're teasing somebody and the hand goes back inside the limo, like they pulled it back. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? So the hand goes out again, and I'm like, oh, this shit, what is this now, Nipsey Russell? And, and I, so I go to grab it, and they pull it, the hand gets pulled back in again in, inside the back of the limo. So now I'm like, all right, wait a minute, I, I, I don't know if I feel. <laughs> and Michael Jackson sticks his head out. Oh, um, who do you want to kiss? Whose hand do you want to kiss, you, mine or Diana Ross's? And I was like, oh, my God. It's, it's the ball busting has traveled down to the talent. I said, uh, you know what? Why don't we have a threesome? I'll kiss both your hands. And I helped him out. I kissed his hand. She got out. I kissed her hand. And seriously, we all had a, a big, giant laugh about that. And I told him one day, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be telling the story of my threesome with Michael Jackson and Diana Ross. And Michael Jackson says, well, first, make sure it's Diana Ross with the top billing and then me. And I said, okay. And, like, you know, like in a, in a Western movie, we walked off into the sunset. I took them to their respective trailers to get ready for the thing. And uh, uh, there was uh, another oops, I did it again moment in my life where, um, thank God I was blessed, and I don't mean this in a pompous way at all, please understand that, but uh, since I was a kid, God God blessed me with, uh, I don't know what it is, I, I, I see it, I saw it in my son, uh, and I, I, see, I see it so much in Mr. Cheeks now, um, that there isn't anybody that looks at Mr. Cheeks and isn't like, Want to grab him and hug him and kiss him and 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 hang out with him and uh, he's just got that that aura about him. And when I was a kid, uh, I had that. Uh, you know, just people just enjoyed being in my company at a very young age. You know, I'm talking about the grown-ups. You know, and and I believe you know that blessing is what happened here because certainly I had no right even interfering with the driver. I really had no right going over to the car. Maybe going and standing until she came and just, you know, escort her, but not going in, reaching a hand, kissing a hand, singing Paul Anker songs to her, and then kissing Michael Jackson. I, mean, I, I had no, no, no right doing that. And if they wanted to let me go, they would have had every right to do that. But it never even, it was never even an option. I never even got to that part. Um, uh, it was just a, a, another great, uh, a great. Memory for me that uh, will never go. It will never disappear. 
So anyway, let me get on this. Uh, you know what? So I don't forget it. Ha ha! I'll do the COVID thing now, and uh, then we'll come right back. And I just have a tiny rant. Tiny rant. It's not even a rant. It's just sticking up with some friends of mine. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. There we go. I did my civic duty, uh, especially what's going on now. It's, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Now, all the states, all the Democratic states uh, across this country are starting to ease the belt up, ease the restrictions down on the masks. Uh, yeah, we're not going to go with the mask mandates anymore. We're not, you know what? It's going to be here forever, uh, you know, at different stages, just like uh, uh uh, the flu, and, and, and some other things. So, you know, we're we still going to urge you and remind you to, to take to get your shots. And, uh, you know, you're going to watch, and I mark my words, if anybody remembers a podcast I did a couple of months ago, I said it's, it's not going to be called a vaccine anymore. It's going to be called a shot, just like get your flu shot, um, get your pneumonia shot. It's not a vaccine. Because it was a vaccine, and you take it, then you don't have to take anything else anymore. You don't have to wear a mask and this and that. I got, I don't know, I'm vaccinated. No, you're not. You got a shot. You got, you got a shot uh, uh, that is borderline experimental. Uh, but let's see what happens. No, no. I mean, now uh, we made miniature versions now for, for children under five. What? I've never heard that before in my life. Never. But anyway. I mean, even going back to the polio vaccine. Now, that was a vaccine. And guess what? Polio was eradicated, gone, boom, destroyed. Okay, because it was a vaccine. But this, now they're saying it's going to be around. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come in waves just like, you know, uh, like I said, the flu. Never, flu and pneumonia, never have we ever heard any real numbers every year or, or the way this thing has been going every hour. You know, being jammed down and jammed into us. Um, you're going to watch that. Uh, the, the language is going to change. It's, it, it's like I said, it's not going to be a vaccine anymore. It's going to be a shot and a booster shot. Okay. You know, it's going to be, um, uh, I'm throwing a number out. 500 people died with the coronavirus, not from the coronavirus. It's like when prostate cancer first came out and, and, all of a sudden, they started realizing how many men uh, uh, across the world uh, are suffering and, and, and getting prostate uh, cancer, and they didn't know much, they didn't really know much about it. So it used to be uh, five hundred thousand men died last year from prostate cancer. You know, putting the fear of God into every man that's walking around out there every time you get up in the middle of the night to pee. And, uh, you know, the same thing with, with breast cancer when it was first, you know, very strong. Once you got it, it was considered a death sentence uh, until they, you know, developed something uh, to try to combat it. They still haven't come up with anything to get rid of it yet. But you don't hear about it, you know. You don't hear about it. But you used to hear so-and-so died uh, from prostate. Now it's with. Now it's, the, the, it's men die, more men die with prostate cancer than from prostate cancer. If it travels, if it moves, if it metastasizes, whatever, however you pronounce that, to different parts of your body, well, that's when the beginning and the end comes. You know? Well, that's the same thing here. You're going in with underlying conditions, and you develop, uh, you know, you can come up with a new variant every 26 seconds if you want. But if you have underlying conditions that you're either treating or even not being treated for, and then this, this virus gets into your body, it, yes, it can have very, very serious, if not deadly, effects. And, and, and we get that, but just be honest. So now they, they're like they're scratching their heads saying, you know what? You know what we haven't tried? We haven't tried to be honest. <laughs> you know, this big word that's been going around now for the last six months to a year, transparency. Let's have transparency, you know. You know what is that? Is trans trans uh, transgender parents, they switch identities? 
Get it? Transpat? No? Okay. <laughs> but anyway, so that wasn't my rant. This is my quick little rant. Um, uh, Dan Bongino, uh, I think I said on the last podcast, uh, has been banned for life from YouTube. Interesting. Now he's just been fired from Fox. They're trying to get his uh, his own uh, social media podcast. Um, uh, for, I think it's from Rumble now. Uh, taken off. They sent him uh, work, uh, work letters, stating that his work and what he's doing is considered terrorism. I mean, these are. These are gigantic bombs you're throwing at this guy. For what reason? I don't understand. You know, uh, he does his show. He's 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 uh, very well versed. Uh, you know, he gets a little dramatic, but he is Italian, so we let it go. <laughs> but you know, he's very well uh, educated into what he talks about. He's a former Secret Service agent. There, you know, so you know he, he's got some. Some clout. He's got some pals that can slip him some information here and there. And okay, so maybe that's the danger. I don't know, but uh, you know, he certainly has grown his audience, and he certainly has gotten a little more vocal in what he talks about. But he's not saying anything that isn't being blasted everywhere. So why are they going after him? And then now they go after Joe Rogan. Now they're throwing bombs at him. You know, same thing. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Oh, my God. Oh, that, 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 boom. Now he's got to get up and apologize. And uh, he supposedly the word is that he elected uh, to take all his previous podcasts down. Uh, and to be honest with you, I have a, a, a pal in the industry over there that uh, said it was actually the other way around. But they wanted him to get up and say that, that it was his idea. So to keep his show... To keep in the limelight, I mean, let's face it, that's, that's also part of it. Um, and, and, and to keep getting paid, you got to go along with it. Otherwise, then what? Then you just fall into the ranks of everybody else out there. And I like Joe Rogan's on talk radio. I like Joe Rogan on uh, Fear Factor. Um, I like him as an MMA announcer. Um, but when he started doing the, the podcast, I was like, who are you? You know, what are you... What, what are you doing with a podcast and acting like you know so much? And you know, and then I started watching it and listening to it, and I thought, wow, he is an intelligent man, you know, because on on uh, uh, talk radio, you know, he played this uh, like kind of Joey guy from Friends kind of guy in the radio station, you know, always chasing the broads and kind of stupid Italian guy. So yeah, sometimes you get stuck with a with a stereotype that you play. You know, you want to call it a character actor, fine. But he did know what he was saying. And I think, if not the, he was in the top three um, most listened to podcasts and now watched because he does it with video too, like Bongino, but, you know, in the world. So there's power in that. So you got to be careful how you go at him, you know, especially when you got sponsors involved and everything else. And so they told him, this is what we want you to do. You're not going to lose your job, this and that, da, da, da. but we want you to apologize. And this is the rant. Okay? See how nice I was doing this whole thing? And I'll stay nice through it, but the, my rant is this. If you've been following him, listening to him at all, when he said the N-word, it wasn't a derogatory sentence that it was used in. It wasn't an insult that anybody aimed at anybody, one person or any race or any any clique or any town or any city. He was just like, yeah, you know, uh, like like uh, the, like black people do with each other, and uh, uh, you know, hey, what's up, my, uh, you know, I'm, I didn't even want to say it, and like somebody's gonna come after me, but you know, and uh, a couple of times, you know, use that phrase, uh, and I'll use it with the a at the end, so I don't, nobody knows I'm. You know, taking shots at nobody. But a couple of times, more than a couple of times, but, and they'd be like, nigga, please. And that's all he meant. He's heard it. He was trying to be cool and that, that, that. you know. Uh, the the actual people that were uh, on the receiving end of that uh, during his uh, podcast, uh, to my knowledge, were not, were not offended at all. It's just that people started listening and this guy's getting to be too big. We need to do something, you know. So 
Now, there's no history of all his podcasts that made him the top or in the top three throughout the world podcasters. So how do you, how do you drum up a new audience? You know, like, who are you listening to? Oh, it's got Joe Rogan. Oh, yeah, let me check him out. You got no way to go and check him out. There's no more, there's no history of Joe Rogan's podcast. Gone. For what? If anything, apologize, explain yourself. But they didn't allow him to do that either. You know, I was told that they wrote the apology for him. And if you want to keep your show, this is what you had to do. So he just got up and, you know, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean anything. This and that. Boom, boom. And that's it. But no explanation to what, to what you were saying. And nobody, nobody's up in arms about it, you know. And then you get over to the Whoopi Goldberg thing and then what she said. And, other, you know, other things she said. She's made quite a few comments over the years against the Jews. But they were very vocal in, the, in their... Uh, you know, distaste for what she said, and so she, they made her apologize. And uh, you know, from the, I won't even say the name of the show because I hate it. But they, you know, they made her apologize. And her big stink was ranting and raving. I'm quitting the show. Fuck you. Fuck this. Fuck that. You know, you never even gave me a chance to explain myself. Well, why should you get any different treatment than Joe Rogan? You know, your entertainment. He's entertainment. You said something wrong. He said something wrong. But well, whatever. You know, let it slide. But no, you know, and Joe took it uh, with class. Let's put it that way. And uh, so that's my rant. Uh, you're going after people that have a voice. You're going after people that even more importantly to them. And when I say them, I'm, I'm talking about you know who, those people. Um, that's more importantly to them. You have a following, you know, a, a big following. And there's power in that. And anywhere that they could sniff or see that somebody is gaining or has has you know amassed a lot of uh, amassed a lot of power, that that becomes that person becomes a target, or or that company becomes a target, or that movement becomes a target because nobody can have power but them. You know, they you know, it's supposed to be working for us. You're supposed to be for the people, but you're not. You're for yourself, and the people have to. You know, bow down to you and 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 give in to you and let you do and say and go and do whatever you want to do. You know, uh, you know we're lining up uh, cannons and this and that and everything else because he wants to he wants to push the button so bad and and go blow up uh, uh, the Russian troops over uh, the Ukraine border and uh, you know if you're not a good tennis player or or, or or got any kind of street smarts in you which he does not and I'll go and say what Joe Rogan I mean. Uh, Don, uh, Dan Bongino is not allowed to say anymore. Um, what he, what got uh, Bongino in trouble is, and I think I said it uh, on the last podcast, I don't know, I said it somewhere, but he said over and over again, I'm not a doctor, this is just my opinion. But it appears to me, very clearly, he has some kind of a frontal lobe disorder. It's not that he doesn't remember a person. He just he has a hard time uh, bringing up the name of a person, of a country, of, of what you did yesterday. I had, you know, he, he took, calls the guys and they go, you know, that guy over there, or, you know, and, uh, or that girl over there, or, uh, or, you know, what's that breakfast that everybody has in the morning and blah, blah, blah. blah. And so are they saying he's not allowed to, to say that? Well, actually, they are saying that. So then... Something I, I all the way back to when I was a kid, I always got a, 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 a real thrill out of the fact that we were like one of the only countries in the world that you had freedom of speech that you could say whatever you wanted. Almost like you know, like I said, you can't you can't stand up in a crowded movie theater and scream fire at the top of your lungs and and cause mass hysteria as everybody's trying to run out and God forbid people get hurt or killed because that is against the law. I get it. Get it big time. Makes makes so much sense. But to get up and say, and even to soften the blow with the pillows of words that he used, I'm not a doctor. I haven't seen any medical reports. Um, uh, it, this is just my opinion. But, okay, well, then that's freedom of speech, isn't it? So how how is nobody... Uh, even even from the from the Democratic side too, along nobody from the Republican side stepping in and saying, "Wait a minute, whoa, whoa, 
You guys are going way too far. We need to get together here, at least for this one thing, and make sure we preserve that freedom of speech. Because once that goes, everything goes after that. Everything goes after that. Like dominoes on fire. Boom, boom, boom. It's going to be over. So we also need to stand up as, 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 as a people and say, hey, wait a whoa, whoa, back up there, pal. Don't tell me what I'm allowed to say. Don't tell me what I'm allowed to think, you know? Be like that, uh, that song. Don't tell me what to say. Don't tell me what to do. You don't know me. And that's what they think. So that's what we should, uh, everybody should do, you know? Every, uh, play that song as much as you can on your social media. You don't own me and dedicate it to the government. Because uh, the dangers are close to owning. And, you know, that's one thing we don't need for sure. So there you go. See, it was easy. It was painless. It wasn't a real rant. Um, so I'm going to go off with this. Tomorrow tomorrow morning, and I think I just saw that my phone was ringing, so it was probably the, the, the uh, hospital. Uh, I'm having uh, my first uh, surgery on my eye. Well, actually, my second on my left eye. And uh, some past two days of putting drops in my eye, they gave me, it makes me almost blind in my left eye. It's it's amazing. It's everything is just so freaking blurry, and uh, but they said that's normal. It's supposed to do that. So uh, I think I think I have to be there at seven o'clock in the morning. It's about two hours, and blah, 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 blah. and then next Thursday will be the second eye. But let's just take one one prayer request at a time. You know, and sometimes during the day, tonight, tomorrow morning, whatever, you know, just say, hey, you know, God, uh, you know, hey, it sounds like uh, Cliff from Cheers there. Hey, uh, you know, uh, take care of that guy, Sonny. And uh, more importantly, take care of uh, the Surgeon Jeff, uh, Jeff Fair, uh, Jeff Fair, oh my God, Scott Fair, uh, you know, that uh, he doesn't sneeze or get the hiccups when he's inside my eye because uh, I told him. He was, I have to tell you this, you know, it could, it could get infected, it could be this, it could, it could turn color, blah, 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 blah. you know, you could lose an eye. And I said, well, okay. I understand it, that you, uh, you have an obligation to tell me, you know, and lay everything out, and I, and I appreciate it. Well, let me lay something out for you. I said, if I lose one eye, you're going to lose two. So, And I think I said that last week. And he goes, oh, yes, so we understand each other. And got a nice little chuckle out of that one, too. So, so uh, uh yeah, I'm glad it worked out that I could do this today, uh, because tomorrow, and then I'm not allowed to lift anything uh, heavy for uh, uh, ten days. I'm like, wow, how am I gonna, how am I gonna urinate? <laughs> oh my God, the things that come out of my mouth. Anyway, uh, but yeah, so uh, and what is it? There? Oh, I can drive. I can't drive home, and I can't drive for three or four days. But then, then I could, I could drive. Can't fly, uh, and then especially if you're going into the in, into the next week and do the, the other eye. But he does say that when it's done, ninety nine point whatever number he threw out there, you know, you're never going to have to wear glasses, and uh, you're going to see uh, twenty twenty. That ah, might be twenty thirty, but uh, twenty forty. I forget what he said. You know, but uh, you're gonna you're gonna be able to see. Uh, very clearly, and, and, and you can turn your, your glasses that you had to get uh, six months ago, you could turn them into sunglasses. And you know what? That's okay with me. Even though it was quoted to me first as twenty four ninety and I. All right, so five grand. Uh, yeah, shit. You know, I don't have five grand to throw around. I, I don't have disposable income, but I don't want disposable eyes, so Okay. Um, then after some tests, uh, the stigmatism in the left eye has gotten bigger, and, and there's something on the optic membrane, and this, uh, uh, so we're going to have to do this and take a, okay, so now it went from five grand to 6,100. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, 6,100. I said, okay. But what happens to the 5,100? Well, we had to do this, we had to add this. And, uh, <sighs> All right, 6,100, Okay. Another week goes by, you know, more measurements and this and that, and checking out the left eye again. And da, 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 da. You know, okay, uh, all right, just sign this right here. And uh, this was Monday. And I look at it, I go, what is that? I said, what is that number? Uh, 8530. Oh, that's how much the, uh, the surgery, for both eyes. I like, I don't care if it's for three eyes. 
I was originally told 5,000. Then I was told it went to, it did go to six, that's right. Then I was told it went to 6,100, right? Then I was told it went to 6,700. I balked, they put it back down to 6,100. And now you're trying to hit me with 8,500? It's not gonna happen, okay? So call off the surgery and, and, and go back into your used car parking lot and go sell some more cars. I said, oh, no, wait, Mr. Grosso. I said, ah, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. This is like once you get your, you get somebody on the hook. That's what happened with my teeth, with that dental 365. Same thing. I went in uh, because of the radiation I had to my neck. It, it had killed some bones, and I had necrotic bones up in, uh, in, in the upper part of my mouth, uh, and I had a tooth that was loose. From, it's another story, but uh, make a long story short, uh, we can do this, and uh, we're going to have to I can take all your teeth out, and we can put this arch in. Uh, that's a snap indenture. You know, it's an implant. But it's four implants, put all your teeth in. Really? Yeah. How much is that? Well, the surgery is going to be uh, 4200 We could probably do the whole thing for like $7,200. I'm like, holy shit. But I'll have a, a whole row of teeth now. Yep. Yeah? Okay. So I go in, rip all my teeth out of my top part of my mouth, and four from the bottom. But I mean rip it out and then grind all the dead, the dead bone out of there. Right? Then put cadaver bones back in there so it can grow and knit together with the other bone, sew it all together, drive 12 miles to the other place, you know, their other office, so they could you know, fix me and push the, the, uh, the denture they had made for me up over the swollen gums. I mean, it was a horrible, horrible, painful experience. But looking at the end result that at least, all right, I'm going to have the snap on teeth put in. I got all the necrotic bone taken out of my mouth. So that's good. Okay. Okay. All right. When it comes time to do everything, I, we got this, we're going to have to do, it's going to take about a month and a half. Um, uh, once we put the screws into your, into your gum, uh, before we can put the other part in the post and then do the snapping. I was like, all right, I waited this long. I'm not going to argue with that. Same, same situation. Now they bring the paperwork out. You know, we just got to sign this and that, and that, and get your consent, and we take a, you know, we take a, a couple of thousand as a down, uh, down payment, deposit, whatever you want to call it. All right, okay. And I look at, the, I go, what is this? Same, I swear to you, it's the same. Well, I said, it says seventeen thousand, whatever. I think it was one sixty. And uh, what is that? Well, that's how much you know everything's going to cost. I go, you told me it was seven seven thousand. It was a little over seven thousand. Oh. oh, oh well, no, that was, uh, I'm sorry, let me back this up. After, yeah, every, I'm all right. After it's all done, I got this thing shoved into my mouth. I had to keep going back to the surgeon. And now there's no teeth on, my, on the top row of my mouth. And uh, I think I got about nine teeth on the bottom because they had to take some others out. Same thing, the radiation when I had the cancer um, and the tumor taken out of my neck, it killed some of the bones. Okay. So now we're looking at everything to go ahead with the implants, and I look down, 17160. I'm like, what is that? And he said, well, uh, that's for, you know, for the whole surgery, you know, but, but plus the implants. And, and the, I said, you told me 7,000. Well, you know, I've got to be honest with you. When we got in there, it was worse than I thought it was going to be, number one. And uh, I'm like, Jesus, you know, <laughs> that's how I'm talking in my head. But I said, you know, you're, you're, like, a, you're like a crooked mechanic. You know, I took a car in to get an oil change. You want to give me tires, brakes, a new engine, a new transmission? I, uh, I said, well, I don't have $17,000. That's a car. What are you, crazy? Well, you know, maybe you could take out a loan. I said, I'm not taking out a loan. My credit is shit anyway, but I'm not definitely not taking out a loan for $17,000. I'll stay with the denture. And, you know, with all the avenues I could have gone or pursued, I asked for help with maybe, I don't know. But there's no way. And I was going to spend seventeen thousand dollars. So, so I've been, now I've been living since nineteen, since twenty nineteen, no, twenty eighteen. Um, you know, with dentures, it's enough. So when I get down here, every place you look, signs on television, in the papers, this is the place to be for implants for seniors, for this, for that. But ooh, but eat, but okay, good. I go, I go to two different places. And without going through a whole long dragged out story, one quoted me eighteen million, eighteen thousand dollars, and the other one quoted me twenty three thousand dollars to to get the um, this bar put in because, as far as they could see from their X rays and scans they did, 
there's no uh, cadaver bones in my in my mouth. So I go, what does that mean? The guy ripped my friggin' face apart and put them in. I'm not saying anything. Maybe they just didn't take and then, then you know, they just, they, they dissipated, you know, or maybe they never put them in. I'm like, what? I, you know, I'm, I'm not taking shots. I'm not saying anything, but all I'm telling you is they're not there now. I don't see any cadaver bone, and one part of your mouth, the bone is is a little too much uh, to put an implant in, so we're going to have to put a metal bar with the implant. Oh, so screw it. Good night. Goodbye. So horrible. Anyway, I didn't mean to take away from my threesome with Diana Ross and Michael Jackson. And uh, so I said, say a prayer, and I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Week number two is done. Week number three is a big surprise. That's all I'm going to tell you. So everybody have a great day. Be safe. Uh, stay warm. Uh, that includes Florida. <laughs> you dirty, rotten son of a... I right, love you all. Take it easy. Ciao.